Back in May of 2019, we had the opportunity to go and visit the UK in order to visit museums and also to meet with some really remarkable people. One of those remarkable people was Lloyd of the channel Windy Beige. And while we were touring with him uh, this particular museum called Vindolanda, which is also a Roman fort, he stopped and pointed out a couple of the uh, items in the display cases and said, do you really think that is a fill-in-the-blank, the thing that the label said? And it got us thinking about the role of interpretation in uh, the process of archaeology. What follows is a segment from the special podcast we did with Lloyd that talks a little bit more about this very issue. In the field of archaeology, there's an awful lot of conjecture and just current consensus that, that will then change perhaps because it's done so in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, what, how things were used, interpretations of what things are, uh, they change and very few of them are absolutely certain. I actually have a question for you about the Good. archaeology thing because uh, one of the things that totally surprised me and that I thought was so interesting is so we're all three of us are going around to that museum, right? Mm-hmm. And you know we run across a toilet seat and you're like, ah, I don't think that was a toilet seat, right? And and uh, that's not quite how I put it. Close, right? So so in 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 that and in many other instances, we're going around and finding these these objects, right? And mm. and sort of actively. Uh, critiquing and considering what those items might really have been used for, you know, going beyond the the plaque, sort of. Going right, beyond I was the thinking that plaque. possibly because you're from America, yeah. uh, you come over here, you see something in the museum, it's got a label that's printed in black and white by yeah. someone who's presumably terribly learned and has been yes. brought up in Britain and everyone exactly. in Britain just knows things because Well, and they have magical. an accent too, I mean... And it just screams um, authority. Well, I, I don't, but you do. Uh, <laughs> um, fair, fair. And... I suppose I was sort of giving you permission to doubt the labels mm. by doubting them myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I know it was before that, before the loose seat, where I, I pointed out a couple of uh, definite examples where, for goodness sake, there's no way that that is that. What is it? The, the one that uh, we ought to talk about the battle, the battle standard briefly. It's I, two inches tall. So it's <laughs> literally two inches tall. It's like it's, that. There's it's the Vindeland of battle standard. For the benefit of our listeners, this is a, a figurine of a horse. It's approximately an inch and a half long and about two inches high. And it looks like it could fit on the end of some sort of pole. And yep. originally there was an interpretation that this was the battle standard that you'd rally around and you'd be looking across the battlefield to find it. And this then, was their star find. Come see the Vindolanda battle it's, standard. It's, it's on their branding material. It's part yeah. of their logo. It's on it's on everything. And on it, the t-shirts. It, and all the t-shirts, it's, it's this size. On the door, it's this size. And they used to have a, a huge flower bed that was in the size of it, in the shape of it uh, <laughs> out the front. That's gone That's now. That's intense. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's like that. Just how good, the, you may, in the middle of a battle, you know, there's 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 uh, all sorts of terrible things happening left, right, and centre. The guy to the left of you just suddenly gets hit in the throat by an arrow, and the 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 the, the retreat is sounded on on a trumpet, and you look around the battlefield and all the chaos and riot and flying blood and dust for something this tall. How no battle standard. I don't think it's a battle standard. <laughs> the other interpretation is that it's a, a figurine or a decoration for an ox cart, which may indeed be more likely. Yeah. Or a... yeah. Oh, you don't know that it's that, but um, maybe it was a, a, a miniature figurine of a battle standard for a, for a model in a Roman museum. Which had little little guys about, you know, like yeah. action man size. Yeah, yes. so a, a, little, Joe. a little miniature flag or yeah, like a yeah. G.I. Joe. Yeah. So. That, that seems yeah. to make a little more sense to me, right? Yeah. So, if it was originally. So that or, or a cart fitting. Speaking of that, one of the things that struck me in the museum was a number of toy swords that were obviously children-sized, mm-hmm. something yeah. in the range of a foot long and, and not crudely carved, but, uh, and again, it's hard to tell because one of time. Of them was, but, yeah. but uh, you know, whittled together. This is the, something you could imagine a father carving for his son so he can play soldier, mm-hmm. just like his dad. I mean, that's a really interesting detail that this is not just a, a military camp but also a family camp there's uh, the family quarters outside yeah i think in round numbers if i remember if i remember reading the the, the descriptive cards correctly it's something like a thousand soldiers and about five thousand uh hangers on if you will families right. traders so on and so forth yeah. at, at, at at least one point in the fort's history mm-hmm. so so mostly non-military people um I, actually i just want to kind of follow up on that it was so interesting to see you uh critique all those uh all those descriptions, right? And I, and like, I think you did it very respectfully and professionally. I don't mean to imply anything 
Well, I mean, humorously, but but not not certainly okay. you weren't being uh, being disrespectful or anything like that, right? Um, but uh, I just <laughs> two inches tall. <laughs> Lucius, can you see that? Okay, I'll I'll, I'll let you got the... good eyesight. What's going on? <laughs> hey, would you hold on a minute? Stop trying to stab me. I need to see where my guys are. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave the viewers to decide if, if we're being disrespectful or not. Okay, I, right, yeah. That's open for interpretation, I guess, at this point. But um, oh no, I, I, I think we're fine. But um, anyway, it was just so interesting to, to, to see you do that, to think about how you know for for most of my life I go to museums, and although I I can go to multiple museums and I can read other books and I can do a little bit of critical reading, mm -hmm. you you know uh, in no small part because of your uh, background in archaeology, we're doing very intense, deep, and critical readings of all of these artifacts. Uh, and, and looking at those descriptions and saying, is that plausible? Is that not? So I'm curious, like, uh, I, I, I don't know, am I, am I correct in, 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 in saying that, that it's sort of your archaeological background is coming to bear there, and so you're, you're looking at all those artifacts, not just as, as a viewer, yes. but also as an evaluator, almost as a um, curator when yourself. You, when you come to some big topic, I, when I first started learning Lindy Hop Swing Dance, for instance, uh -huh. you go to a lesson, you learn four moves, yeah. and then, okay, I've got four moves, and then you do another four the next, and you've got eight moves, mm -hmm. and after a while you think, how many of the moves do I know? What, mm -hmm. what proportion of the dance have I learned now? Yeah. And it's only when you've been learning the dance for years and years you realize there is no end. There's an infinite number of moves and you can always make up more and always do more variations on them. So there, there is no answer. There's no point at which you've learned half the, mm -hmm. the, the system. Well, when you study something for a reasonably long time, eventually you get a feel for how much there is to know and how sure we are of the things that we know within it. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm now reasonably comfortable about how sure we can be about certain things. Mm. And so I know that in the field of archaeology, there's an awful lot of conject conjecture and just current consensus that, that will then change perhaps because it's done so in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, what how things were used, interpretations of what things are, uh, they change and very few of them are absolutely certain. Um, uh, something that, for instance, like th those weighing scales we were looking at, those weighing scales, they work as weighing scales and the same weights and gradations crop mm -hmm. up again and again. You can be pretty pretty certain those are weighing scales but if you find a plank with a hole in it and someone tells you it's a loose seat it's a plank with a <laughs> hole in it you know there's no one on earth who can say absolutely definitely that that particular plank with that particular hole in it that was a bit small it was like it was like that big yeah about four inches across i don't know where you live but you know loose seats tend to be more like that sort of size where i am um uh yeah so but then I, I suppose I was also making com making conversation, you know, because I just wanted. Do you think that's a loose seat? Yeah, They're yeah, saying yeah. it's a loose seat. I really appreciated that game of interpretation because it, it's, for one thing, it's more intellectually engaging. For another thing, it seems to be more intellectually honest, particularly mm -hmm. where uh, archaeology is based in interpretation. You, you make good interpretations and bad interpretations, and there's a difference between the two. Mm -hmm. And and qualifications and training matter, but uh, it is still an interpretive game. Yeah. And so there's, uh, like you said, some things we can be very sure about, some things we can be less sure about. It's interesting when you mentioned the Lindy Hop, um, w one thing that I find fascinating in languages is that there tend to be a very small number of words that do the bulk of the work. Right. Something like, you know, 200 words that do most of the talking and then a vast variety past that. English has far more words than I will ever know. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, it, it is interesting that after you reach a certain point, you start to realize that, oh, this is the word that will appear on, on a, an advanced exam and probably nowhere else. Right, and you know that there isn't anyone on the planet who knows all the words of English. Mm -hmm. Yes. Not, there's not anyone who's that expert. So there isn't anyone who can, with absolute authority, tell you that word doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Right, but there is a point where you, you've mastered well past the first 200 that do the most of the work, up to the 2000 range, and you start to feel very competent that, you know, you can say with some certainty that you've mastered it. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can detect whether something sounds English, or right. break down uh, yeah. what its probable meaning is in context. Mm -hmm. And you can certainly get very good at playing the game, even if, e even if you can't reach quote unquote perfection, right? Even if you can't learn all the words, you can still get very, very good at playing the game. And you can get very good at continuing to learn and play the game as you go, right? Which in this case would be going to museums and, and well, looking at the, the toilet seat and saying, I don't buy that. You know, or, or, even, or, you know, we're allowed to think through these mm -hmm. things, right? Maybe you come to the conclusion that, that it is correct. You know, I was, I was just thinking maybe ceramics are sort of those 200 commonest words in English, 
right? The, the archaeological equivalent, because 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 ceramics are everywhere, right? They, mm-hmm. they they tend to preserve very well. And then maybe, oh, I don't know, something like textiles are yep. more like your your five dollar words in English, right? That pop up very rarely. Anyway, funny little thought, but but yeah, I I think the the linguistic metaphor is kind of interesting. As always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you have not checked out Lloyd's channel, please check it out. Do yourself a favor. It's amazing. I'll leave a link to one of my favorite videos down below. Thanks for watching and have a great day.